back to the pursuit of living well going through the foundation for inner peace and today we're on lesson number 13 a meaningless world engenders fear finally we get to a aha relief through this lesson today's idea is really another form of the preceding one except that it is more specific to the emotion aroused actually a meaningless world is impossible Nothing without meaning exists. The exercises for today, which should be done about three or four times, not more than a minute or so at each time, are to be practiced in a somewhat different way from the preceding ones. With eyes closed, repeat today's idea slowly to yourself. A meaningless world engenders fear. A meaningless world engenders fear. A meaningless world engenders fear. Then open your eyes and look about you slowly, saying, at things you rest upon your eyes, or at things you rest your eyes upon, I mean, I am looking at a meaningless world. I am looking at a meaningless world. I am looking at a meaningless world. Conclude with, a meaningless world engenders fear because I think I am in competition with God. So, the ego comes up with its perceptions of the world and its ways it wants to create, and it has this fear, because it has this fear of God as if going back to the way of correction, it's going to have to face this guilt. But God doesn't, God doesn't punish you for the guilt that you fear. God forgives you. And that's why we learn to forgive through this, is because we're forgiven. But remember this, whenever you're struggling between fear and love, recognize that it's a competition between your ego and God. Your ego is out for a power, power search. And that's the struggle here, the struggle for power. We have no power when it comes to God, when it comes to this universe. We are little specks of dust in the whole spectrum of things. So to surrender and to release our ideas of the meaningless world we've created, we can accept that there's no such thing as meaninglessness. And we can let our eyes rest upon things and see them in a new way. Some excerpts from the text. I lost my place. Fear and conflict. You may believe that you are responsible for what you do, but not for what you think. The truth is that you are responsible for what you think because it is only at this level that you can exercise choice. So, we're thinking all day when we're not observant over our thoughts, we're not being responsible. Meditation helps you become the observer of your thoughts as well as these exercises because we're witnessing a lot of our thoughts. When you get so quiet, you realize you are the witness. When these thoughts come up, you're able to decipher where they're from and you can make then a choice. Am I going to go down this path? Or am I going to go down this path? Am I going to put this out into the world? Or am I going to put this out into the world? As an observer, you can make that choice. 
you're a responsible, you're a conscious human being. That's why this work is really important. Imagine if we lived in a world where people were responsible and acknowledged that they have the power over their choice. They have the power to choose and you're responsible for those choices. When you are fearful, you have chosen wrongly. That is why you feel responsible for it. 